Use of Nebulizers for Children and the Side Effects by Dr. Srikantha JT. Nebulizer is a device used to deliver medicines through inhalation route. That means the way we take tablets and syrups, the same way if I have a problem in my breathing pipes as well as lungs, I can directly deliver the medication into the breathing pipe as well as lungs through inhalation route through a nebulizer. We call that as nebulization. That is, the process is called as nebulization. So, when we talk about nebulization, there is a device which delivers the medication through the inhalation route called as nebulizer. There are three types of nebulizers currently available. The first type is jet nebulizer, the second type is a ultrasonic nebulizer and the third type is a mesh nebulizer. All the three have their own advantages and disadvantages but what is significantly available in the market is a jet nebulizer but now currently there are a few centers which are completely dependent on either ultrasonic or mesh nebulizers specifically in ICU setups. So how does a nebulizer work? So you fill the chamber of a nebulizer with the desired medication and fill it up to a certain quantity. Once you filled up with a certain quantity of the medication, you switch on the equipment and depending on the type, either it uh, by the jet ventilator that is by jet or by the ultrasonic that is piezoelectric bells which produces high frequency currents which breaks the molecules into a small small particles or mesh it delivers medicines through inhalational route so when we give it when we switch on the machine the liquid inside through something called as venturi effect is broken down into small small particles and these particles are pushed through a through either oxygen or sometimes the pump which is delivering the uh, medicine to the patient or the person who is using it. So this is how a nebulizer works. When to use nebulizer for a child? So nebulizations for children are usually used for most commonest problems like asthma or viral induced wheezing or something we call as under 5 wheeze with high probability. So, when do we use? That is a very important question. And how do you use? That is also an extremely important question. What we have seen is each and every one having a nebulization machine at home, which is absolutely outrightly something that should not be done. Because when a child is wheezing and you are giving nebulization to a child, can be salbutamol or levosalbutamol without oxygen, the child can develop something called as reflux vase bronchospasm that is rather than breathing pipes becoming bigger the breathing pipe can eventually become smaller that is called as reflux bronchospasm the reason being when you are giving nebulization without oxygen that is humidified oxygen the nebulization solution as well as the air that is being pushed through is cold air so this itself can cause reflex bronchospasm which can be detrimental to the child at the same time when you give nebulization without oxygen there is something called as vq mismatch that is breathing pipes which are connected to the balloons which actually help in oxygen and takes out the carbon dioxide from your body they start opening up without actually carrying the blood to those particular areas that is called as vq mismatch again reiterating areas which are not ventilated now gets ventilated but the areas which are ventilated now which have never been perfused that is no blood flowing through those areas are not flowing or flowing then it becomes extremely difficult so ventilation perfusion mismatch happens so ventilation is not happening because of the bronchospasm but perfusion is happening because the receptors have worked there and that leads to 
ventilation perfusion mismatch which eventually leads to child developing significant problems so if you ask me can nebulization be safely given at home no where then where do we give nebulizations nebulizations have to be always given in hospital settings and it has to be always given with oxygen because humidification of oxygen is extremely important and most importantly without humidification i've already spoken reflex bronchospasm can happen and ventilation perfusion mismatch can happen that is ventilation is not there but perfusion is happening that can lead to significant ventilation perfusion mismatch eventually causing lot of issues so what are the medications that can be given through nebulizations there are umpteen number of medications that can be given through nebulizations like i have mentioned the commonest indication to give nebulization is acute exacerbation of wheezing that is a child has come to us with severe wheeze and saturations are less than 92 there we definitely use nebulization apart from that we also use other medications to be delivered through the inhalational route to the lungs by nebulization that is antibiotics we have conditions like bronchiectasis we have conditions like cystic fibrosis we have conditions where the lungs are damaged where we deliver these medications through inhalational route apart from that we also have some special medications called as pulmozyme or dnas which can deliver that particular medication into the lungs so that the phlegm that is so thick will start getting a little bit more easier for the child to spit it out particularly children with cystic fibrosis apart from that there are some special medications called as uh, prostanil that is prostaglandin pgi2 which can be given as inhalational route for children who have pulmonary hypertension so definitely children not only use nebulizations children can use nebulization in a safer way but in children who have wheezing or asthma it is always indicated not to give nebulizations without oxygen especially at home so that we can not only prevent complications but also make sure that children do not have a rarer complication called as sudden death because of that will my child need to take deep breaths during nebulization nebulizations are devised even if the child is not able to breathe so does your child really require uh, to take deep breaths during nebulization if the child is able to do it it's perfectly fine even if the child is unable to do it nothing to sweat at because it is devised for children to breathe and take that medication even in tidal breathing that is even when you breathe normally the medication is eventually going to go inside so even if the child is unable to take deep breaths the medicine is going to go inside so nothing to be worried about when the child is deep breathing or not does nebulization cause addiction that's a extremely important question that we come across and an extremely important question that has to be addressed for general public at large nebulizations are addictive that's a misnomer because the medicines that are being given through nebulizations are not drugs they are medicines the way the elders take their diabetes and bp medications the same way nebulizations are given to children only and only when they require it if your child doesn't require nebulization we do not give it to them until unless they have something called as asthma or under 5 weeks where we change over to inhalers so nebulizations are not addictive and most importantly nebulizations are safe if given in appropriate conditions